This year marked one of the biggest changes in the American higher education system in decades. In June, the Supreme Court ruled colleges and universities cannot consider race as a factor in admissions decisions, effectively ending race-based affirmative action. The full implications of the ruling are still unclear, but a study of the nonprofit colleges by the McKinsey Institute found even with affirmative action, it would take almost 70 years for colleges to reflect the demographics of the United States. In the new CBS Reports documentary, The End of Affirmative Action, journalist Soledad O'Brien spoke with students and experts on all sides of the issue. Here's a look. When I got there, there were only 26 Latinos in a class of over 400. And remember, this is Texas. Uh, two years before me, there were 72 Latinos in the class. There were over 40 Black students in the class two years before me. In my class, there were four, four African-Americans. And that's just downright shameful. With a short-term solution to a long-term problem, even though we were historically oppressed in, in the past, we should have more opportunities to get in this, into these higher education platforms, like the Ivy Leagues in general. I'm mad about it, but I feel like, to a point, I'm kind of numb to like the sensation of like consistently attacking us. I feel like I'm used to it now for the six years I've been here. But I'm, I feel like we should all should be mad about it. When people debate affirmative action, I always ask them, you know, the why? Why do you think we needed affirmative action? Because people were set back so far that they needed to put laws in place to try to help people catch up and get on a level playing field. For colleges, it's an institutional choice, right? If they wanted to have more racial diversity, they would have more racial diversity. It's not magic. It's kind of just math and strategy. And so if you don't have racial diversity at the end of the day, it's because that university is really not committed to it. Is that true? I think that's basically true. And if it's not providing the resources necessary to support uh, working class, black and Hispanic students and, and, and white and Asian students, then, then it's, it's making a choice that it doesn't want to invest in, in these, these students. And we're happy to say Soledad O'Brien joins us now. Soledad, good morning. Good to see you. It's nice to see you, Vlad. So uh, we've seen what's happened in California, which did away with affirmative action a few years ago. Minority enrollment has plunged. How are colleges and universities going to change their admissions approach in light of this ruling? Yeah, it's really unclear at this point. We do know right now that colleges are very, very nervous and also, it's hard to get access to the data. We may never know the actual implication of what the Supreme Court has done. So the Heckinger Report, which was our reporting partner uh, in this documentary, reached out to about 40 selective colleges, uh, asking them about um, early admissions and how that correlated with a racial breakdown. Only half bothered to respond at all. And of that half, zero, <laughs> none of them mm. actually gave any information. Colleges are worried about being sued, frankly. They're, they're worried um, and on the defensive right now. You know, Soledad, so many people believe, uh, number one, it's good to see you, always good to see you. So many people believe that affirmative action means that people who are not as qualified get into schools or they get a break. So, A, what do you say to them? And the people that are still fighting, what, 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 is, their, what is their fight now? What is their message now? But first start with the people that think yeah. you, affirmative action means you're not really qualified. Yeah, the data would disagree with people who think that. And there's a whole lot of people who believe that. So, for example, in a reporting we show and in this doc, we show the richest 1% of families who are mostly white are twice as likely to get into a, a, a elite college than their middle class families, right? Even when those middle class kids have higher grades, even when those middle class kids have higher test scores. So that thing, that mythology that people believe is just not true. And, and the reason why, of course, is there are legacy admissions, donations, AP classes mm -hmm. aren't available to every single high school student. We also know certain sports aren't available in every single high school. And if you're talking about early decision, which we've just passed that this go around, um, you're committing to pay before you actually know what you're going to have to pay to a college. Well, who can afford necessarily to do that? Only people who are who are wealthy. That's 40 percent of a class 
in college already. So there are all these things that kind of make it unfair for students inherently. It's an eye-opening report. So that O'Brien, great to have you on the show. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Nice to see you both. Good to see you. CBS reports the end of affirmative action premieres tonight at 9.30 p.m. Eastern on the CBS News stream and Paramount+. Plus.